Hey everybody. So today we have um, another cool kind of scrap project for the shop. Uh, we're gonna make one of our lighter cases. It goes really well with the pin cushion, um, just on your on your bench, really useful. And I made up a simple pattern. Again, it's like a buck on the website if you want to make it along with us or make one of your own. So these uh, lighter cases, there's plenty of different designs for these. This is a very, very simple one. The one big thing about this that I like is a lot of the lighter cases will put the seam where the where the button is, kind of like this. And to me, when you're holding it, you kind of hit that seam and I just don't like it. So that's why I, on our pattern, I just switched it and put the seam on the back. So you hold it, there's no seam here. And then as you can see with mine, I always smush the thread down with this and uh, they start looking really cool after a while. Super simple project, so we'll just get into it. I already cut the pattern out here, it's just two pieces. And we have, it's the same piece of scrap we made our pin cushion with last week. We're just going to use more of it and get to tracing it out. So we have our two pieces cut out. This is three, four ounce natural veg. I would do something, we're going to wet mold this in the end. So do something that um, you can wet mold if you want to dye it before or after, that's cool, but don't, I wouldn't necessarily suggest like a super processed leather unless it's really soft because this pattern accounts for wet molding the lighter so it sits in here. And the other thing is if you don't want to add this, um, this split ring, you don't have to. Just don't include this strap at all and it's just a really simple little sleeve for a lighter. So before we start gluing everything, what I want to do is I want the top, and I'll show you on this one, I want this to be nice and smooth because that's the part that we're going to touch with our hands. So I'm just going to take a little bit of 320 grit sandpaper, sand this down and burnish it. So once we have that burnished, we're going to glue this up and we're not going to do anything with our split ring tab yet. We're gonna glue up, uh, obviously, the back of the body of the case, and we're gonna go down and over. I'm gonna leave like a finger's width gap in the middle, because we're gonna fold this over, and we don't really want glue all the way up there, um, because I'm not gonna sew all the way up there. It needs to be a little bit open so the lighter can fit in. So I'm just gonna leave you know, a little gap in the middle there. Um, we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on, and then fold this over and stick it together. So because we're going to put this split ring loop over this seam, we need to finish this seam first. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to level these edges a little bit. I just have a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to put it flat on my workbench and I'm just going to work this back and forth. And then I'm going to do the bottom as well. I want to use like a whole piece of sandpaper, um, but this does the trick. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to nip this edge off just a little bit and round that over because if I don't, over time, it's going to like bend and get all weird and just not be very comfortable to hold. And so once you have that, we're just going to round like this. Just kind of using the natural movement of your wrist to get that nice little curve there, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, bevel these edges and burnish them so that this is a fully finished seam, which is why you wanna use really good glue because we don't want this coming apart afterwards. So the reason we didn't do a super huge curve down here is because when I make my stitch line, I want the stitch line to still be a right angle because this is a very small piece and we don't really have room for a curve without making this way bigger. And now we're just gonna punch these holes and then what I'm also gonna do is in our tab, I'm gonna make my stitch lines on either side. Now you can glue this in before you stitch it, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. I don't do it with glue, it just kind of, it's easier. And the, um, 
the thread is strong enough with this, the way that this is designed that this is three years old, it's not coming off. So um, yeah, we'll show you how to do that. So this little loop here is sized to use Weaver's uh, five millimeter stitching chisels or any five millimeter space stitching chisels. And the way that you do this is you're gonna hang one prong over the edge, and then you're gonna have three prongs right in the middle, and then the fourth should hang right over the edge on the other side. And that way, and if you get a little something like that, that's totally fine. Um, no cuts are ever really perfect. And we're just gonna do that on both sides. And what I like to do is if I'm going from the top down on the top, I wanna to go from the top down on the top on both sides. I don't wanna flip this because if I go from the top down here, these could be kind of off. And then when you put the loop on, it could kind of, instead of being perfectly um, even, it could kind of do one of these things. So we punched from the top on this side. We're gonna go over here and top punch from the top on this side as well. There we go. And now it's time to sew everything up. So before you start sewing, we're gonna take, if you're using the split ring loop, I'm gonna take this and just kind of bend it and I've already burnished all the sides. Just bend it over, get it roughly in the shape that we want it in. And then I'll be using, it's one of our new signature split rings we've did. This is the first version that I made like seven or eight years ago. And when you make these, you have to order 10 or 15,000 of them. So they last quite a while if you're doing lower volume. And this is the new one. Now this one's cast iron and this one's solid brass that's copper plated, super nice. Um, so these will be out soon, but I just wanted to use one because we have some samples and actually today the full lot is coming in the mail. So we're waiting on those as we film this and we're super psyched on it. So we're gonna use this one, it's copper and uh, we're gonna start sewing. So what I did was I put a double stitch on top. Now I'm not usually a huge fan of double stitching that goes over an edge on like a wallet because as this is going in and out of a pocket, um, this is going to be the first point of abrasion and the stitching is gonna wear off. But because this is a lighter case, the lighter is gonna stick out further than this. So it's gonna be very difficult for this to get um, worn down. And also it's nice to have that extra double stitch there because this is, you know, there's a lot of tension right there. So I put that double stitch here. The next step is we're gonna take our loop for our split ring. We're gonna put the split ring on it, and this is a little tricky, so I'm, Grace is not my middle name. Um, I'm probably gonna fumble this about a little bit. But what I like to do is I put the split ring roughly over the first stitch hole. I take my needle and I pop that through. Ideally, there we go, through everything. Once you get that first stitch in, it's pretty smooth sailing. It's a little tricky to kind of hold on to, but you're pretty much good to go. So we're just gonna stitch that up like that, make sure it's nice and tight. And you can glue this, um, I, just, I just don't. Um, and then once we have this loop on, and you can put it anywhere on the on the case too. I just like to just go down one stitch and then the loop. Um, just works the best for for what I use it for. But if you want to put it in the middle, or you can go go crazy with it. So we've made the lighter case, and it's, for all intents and purposes, it's done. But if we put a lighter in, we see we have an issue. It sticks a little too far out. And that's because the last step is, in my opinion, the most fun step. I'm gonna have for water. Well, this is my drinking water. But all we're gonna do is just dump this in. You'll see bubbles. Um, I just wait till the bubbles stop. I don't leave it in for 10, 15, 20 minutes. As soon as the bubbles stop, that tells me that uh, the leather is saturated enough to wet mold. That should be good. Dump it out. Put this somewhere I'm not going to spill it. Then we put our lighter in. And we just push it all the way down. Like that. 
and there we go. And this is super simple, and it's not, I mean, it is wet molding, but you're not, you know, we don't really have a form or anything, we're just kind of shoving this in here, making sure it's centered, and then letting it dry overnight. So we will see you tomorrow with our finished lighter case. A day later, we're all dry, and here we go. And so I can show you the reason why the wet molding is nice is because now the lighter slides out, you can see the case keeps its shape, and so if you have to switch lighters or whatever, um, it just makes it really easy, really comfortable, and you can see that by pushing this down wet molding it, the lighter now sits right where we want it to. And that shape will stay. This is three, three and a half years old, and um, the lighter slides out easy. The shape stays because we wet molded it. And we go through lighters maybe once every two or three months. And it's nice to just be able to slide it out, put a new one in, and you're good to go. And so I have a little sneak peek for you. Um, I think I had mentioned yesterday while we were making this, this is a sample of our the new split rings that we have coming, the signature split rings. Well, look what came in the mail today. A dozen boxes, hundreds of pounds of metal. And um, this is just the start of some of the stuff we've been working on for months now. And so these are our split rings. They're made in the style of advertising key rings from the 19, like, 10s to the 30s primarily, and we do them the same way, except these are solid brass. So the original color underneath the plating is this brass. This is natural brass. Then we did a copper-plated version, and this is a nickel-plated version that is then sandblasted, so it's not super shiny like this one. This is beautiful, but it's like chrome, basically. So we went with the nice sandblasted version. It's a little more modern. Um, and we'll make a whole video about this stuff because it, it comes with the, we have other stuff launching as well and we're going to make a video about how we do the custom metal stuff because I know a lot of people want to know about it. But I just thought I'd share a little sneak peek with you. So with that, we're pretty much done with our lighter case. Um, super simple project but super useful. And I just love having little scrap natural veg stuff floating around my workbench because if you guys are anything like us, you're either making stuff and giving it away or selling it. You don't get to keep a lot of the stuff that you make. And so if you combine that with our pincushion we made last week, you do that a natural veg, in two or three years, all of a sudden, you're working with some really beautiful stuff every day that ages and looks great and shows the signs of wear everywhere. Um, and so remember, if you want to make one of these, uh, there's a pattern for a dollar. It's the links in the description. It's on our website. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.